Well, I think we can go ahead and get started here. This is our last uh, presentation for the day and also for the conference. Uh, following this, we'll just have a quick closing statements of the conference as a whole, and then we'll just roll right into our business meeting uh, for the Central Plains Network for Digital Asset Management. Um, if you are just joining us, uh, if you have any questions, please submit those to the Q&A module and any troubleshooting issues to the chat. Um, also, we will be recording this session and making it available uh, with the presentation slides after the conference. And also, if you wanted to look at the conference, program, both the full and brief, you can go to the website uh, newprairiepress.org forward slash cpndam. Uh, so our present, last presentation is Digitizing in the Classroom, Teaching Undergraduates the Art of Digitizing History. This will be presented by Sophie Rondeau, um, I apologize if I said that incorrectly, who is the Technical Services Librarian at Virginia Wesleyan College, and I will hand it over to her. Thanks, Amanda. I hope everyone can hear me okay. Um, I'm really excited to be here today to talk with you about a course uh, that was taught at Virginia Wesleyan College in fall 2015. Um, and that course involved a unique collaboration between librarians and a faculty member. A little bit about Virginia Wesleyan College. We are a four-year liberal arts college with a full-time enrollment of around uh, 1,450 students. So history professor Richard Bond offered a new course to the Virginia Wesleyan curriculum entitled Digital History. The course formed part of the general studies curriculum. Students were not required to be history majors and there were no prerequisites to enroll. An important part of the course was the final project, which involved digitizing select images from select VWC yearbooks. The yearbooks were chosen following a conversation with college archivist, Dr. Stephen Mansfield. According to Mansfield, the yearbooks are the most highly requested item in the archives, and they would likely garner interest among potential website users. Those users would likely be alumni so an audience for the project was clearly identified. The librarian selected the content to be digitized from the yearbooks. Much of the planning work had already been done before I arrived in mid-July 2015, um, and I was invited to join the team to contribute my understanding of metadata and description. The course outlined the following three outcomes not ranked in order of importance. Firstly, students will learn to assess and evaluate digital tools. Secondly, students will ask historical questions about the tool's utility to historical methodological approaches. And lastly, students will produce scholarly materials for the digital world. Learning outcomes would be applied to specific topics throughout the duration of the course. This slide presents a sampling of those topics, including an introduction to digital toolboxes, a sampling of digital history projects currently available online, the issue of copyright and ethics associated with conducting digital history, digital archive management, how to examine images, metadata, and controlled vocabularies. As mentioned earlier, the final grade for the course was heavily weighted on a yearbook digitization project. For the project, students were expected to formally outline a project plan with their group, digitize select images from select yearbooks following very specific scanning standards with the technologies available to them, attribute Dublin Core metadata to items in Omeka, attribute controlled vocabularies within the D Dublin Core metadata scheme, create exhibits in Omeka, and present their exhibits for feedback to their peers and members of the campus community. Dr. Bond impressed upon the students that these projects would be made publicly available online. Beyond selecting the content, the librarians, which included myself and my colleague, Patty Clark, also contributed by providing instruction for three classes. 
Uh, we played an especially important role in providing instruction and direction to students on the topics of metadata, controlled vocabularies, digital literacy, and other aspects of examining visual materials and attributing subject headings such as aboutness versus isness or ofness. Patty gave the first instruction session on digital literacy in early September 2015. The class examined issues such as what choice of words students would use to describe the information in the images. For example, with the image displayed on the screen right now, Patty had students identify key aspects of the image and what terms they might apply to describe it. She wanted to get them thinking about synonymous terms and accuracy of the terms they would choose. She also wanted them to think um, if their language choices were influenced by their emotions or the emotions reflected in the image and the challenge of interpreting emotional content. She asked them to think whether their choices to describe the images were useful. For example, is the wet cement relevant and noteworthy? When might it be important to identify the wet cement in this picture, and when might it not be? Patty also provided an audio example of the song Frozen, with the purpose of having students discuss how they would describe a familiar piece of textual music that was part of a movie soundtrack. Should its place in the film be considered, or does it stand alone? Um, overall, the digital literacy class was well received, and students were able to grasp the materials. But better linking between descriptive skill development and the digital digitization project was absent. And this may have partly been due to the fact that the class was scheduled early in the semester. And that was well before the yearbook project was scheduled to begin in late October. So I was responsible for providing instruction to students on metadata and controlled vocabularies. And just an aside, I am a technical services librarian and my job does not normally include teaching. Um, I had 70 minutes to teach the students the fundamentals of these concepts and practices and assign two readings to prepare the students for the class. I have provided those readings in the penultimate slide for your reference. So besides formally introducing to students to metadata through different definitions within the context of a digitization project, I wanted them to be aware that metadata is everywhere around them. Some of the images on this screen were used in the metadata instruction session to expose students to everyday objects and web pages where metadata is found. We examine the various properties associated with these items and thus discuss the value of attributing descriptions to the various items. I also encourage them to provide additional examples. And one student suggested that a commercial was a form of metadata, which um, we found interesting and discussed further. I encourage them to continue looking for metadata in the world around them beyond the class. So without getting into the complexity associated with various metadata schema, I wanted to introduce the students, at least conceptually, to what a schema is, and to make it clear that they would be working with the Dublin Core metadata scheme for the project, since it is built into the Omeka framework. We talked about elements and their values in relation to a Game of Thrones example. I asked the students to consider why a title, Game of Thrones, for example, might not be enough information when there are multiple formats associated with a work. We talked about which Dublin Core element would help to clarify format differences. And mostly I wanted them to understand that metadata schemas have a very valuable and practical application and are an essential aid to effective end user retrieval.
As expected, discussing controlled vocabularies was one of the more complicated aspects of the instruction session. Firstly, we looked at a couple of very broad definitions. And then we also discussed their purpose in retrieval, most notably disambiguating and collocating items. We looked at specific examples related to synonymous terms and why qualifiers may be necessary for homonyms. Unfortunately, for want of time, we didn't explore the various types of vocabularies with the exception of thesauri, since students would be using the thesaurus for graphic materials for their projects. Students gained some exposure to the thesaurus for graphic materials through interactive activities in the class designed to get them working with the tool. We did not expect them to build subject strings since this introduces a layer of complexity and we simply didn't have the time and resources for this level of detail. Um, most of them seemed to understand the concepts effectively, but working with the tool proved to be a challenge in their final projects. The next couple of slides will demonstrate the tools we use to support students with their final digitization project. So here is a snapshot of the Google site I built of content standard guidelines for their final projects. Um, building the Google site was really very easy and something I was able to accomplish fairly quickly once we identified encoding and content standards. The site was shared with class participants only. Um, I also set up Google Analytics to assess if students were using the site and how, um, but they were not graded based on the analytics data. It was mostly from my interest alone. Patty compiled a libguide for the course that she used for her digital literacy instruction session and a libguide where students could go for information related to the digitization project. And you're looking at that guide right now. She included links to the Omeka site, the content guidelines link, an example of yearbook image for student practice, and instructions on scanning with the Konica machines and the two different HP scanners we had in the library. So overall, students accomplished tasks, although with varying degrees of success. All student, students finished their projects, but the completeness and accuracy was varied. For example, all students added some metadata to the items they digitized, but for some that may have included only one or two elements when they were instructed to provide data for 12 elements. Students did function effectively in teams to accomplish the tasks, but their manner of divvying up the work was not always equitable. Um, and Dr. Bond uh, had them come up with a project plan before they started the projects and had them submit that plan to him in advance so he would have a sense of how they were going to um, handle their projects as teams. Um, so the fact that it was not equ equ the work was not always divided equ equitably may have been due to a certain degree of ignorance on their part around how long it takes to perform certain functions for example, adding metadata and certain elements in particular is one of the more time-consuming tasks of the project. But despite being warned about this, some students still divided the work in a manner that left some carrying the bulk of the load. And lastly, most of the students were able to function effectively in Omeka with minimal guidance. However, it is unclear whether they would be able to assess and evaluate the tool which was one of the student learning outcomes identified for the course. The things that didn't work so well, the students did not acquire the third learning outcome, uh, which was students will produce scholarly materials. And perhaps this was too much to expect of a general studies course with no prerequisites. It may have also been the result of the content students had to work with. In future, I would consider the content more carefully I'm not sure that the yearbooks provided much historical interest and or value to exhibit building. The yearbooks were selected because they are popular with alumni, 
But I suspect that that is more for nostalgic reasons and digitization and metadata alone would satisfy those interests. My sense is that we would want to give students something more historically meaningful for exhibit building. It seemed they really had to fish to find something of a historical significance with the subject matter. And that made it particularly difficult to create scholarly materials, which is a task already challenging enough to an undergraduate student. So as well, many students struggle to create consistent metadata by completely disregarding content standards and interpreting the content of images subjectively when they are explicitly advised only to describe what they see, not what they interpret. There were captions alongside some of the yearbook photos, and although students were advised to disregard captions that were highly subjective, many still added an additional layer of interpretation to the images or took jazzed up descriptions directly from the captions. It was interesting to all of us providing feedback that many, if not most, of the students did not provide objective historical narratives in their exhibits. Students were given feedback before their final projects were due, and despite being advised to eliminate bias from their narratives, they persisted. Although I can only surmise, it seems that students felt a need to make a positive impression of the college. For example, some of them working on exhibits related to athletics seemed to feel the need to boost the team up despite their having the difficult year. It may be that since alumni were identified as the target audience, students felt the need to paint a pretty picture. The class was open to all students, and given the broad range of student knowledge in the group, there was a demographic division that was very much apparent. Some students were impatient with others, and this created conflict and a sense of perceived superiority or inferiority among the teams. Others handled this with professionalism, so this was no means a reflection of the entire class. Um, lastly, Omeka was not exploited to its full potential, and this was due to the fact that the tool was very new to all of us involved in teaching and preparing for this project. Um, since then, I have been using Omeka to build our library's digital collections public interface and now would be much better equipped to exploit the tool in the future. So in our first meeting, Professor Bond stated that since this was his first time offering this kind of course on campus, he was prepared for the course to fail greatly. And in all fairness, the course was not a failure, but it did present opportunities for improvements as we consider a future class. Student evaluations gave us some clues about how the course could be improved, so that was helpful. Um, one of the comments suggested renaming the course to digitizing history instead of digital history, and that seemed like a fair recommendation and one we have taken to heart. In addition, we have also talked about having the final project to be an oral history project that would get students out speaking to members of the community on a relevant topic that has historical interest. We discussed giving students more liberty in deciding what they may research, or at least providing some parameters with some aspects of flexibility. And we would like to impose an English 105 requirement, which is our required writing course on campus, so that students have writing foundations before enrolling in the course. And this is really to ensure their greater success. And lastly, given that we are dealing with some fairly complex concepts related to information science, we would like the course to be co-taught by librarians and faculty, or at least have more time to provide instruction on information science related issues. And here is the site address, should you like to see the final projects. And thanks very much for your time, and I welcome your questions. Oh, man, we're waiting to see um, some questions come in. All right, thank you. Uh, do you see yourself doing more outreach like this and teaching and sharing your technical expertise? 
Yeah, you know, that's a great question. Um, I think that has a lot of benefits um, to the kind of, um, to, to my profession as, as in as a technical services librarian um, for a number of reasons. I think it validates some of the digitization efforts that I want to, to be able to accomplish and by bringing um, that to, to um, the classroom, it gives me a little bit more clout in achieving um, those kinds of goals. Um, and I really want to see our, our digitize, uh, digitization efforts, um, so the digital collections that we're creating being used in the classroom um, so that they have a real uh, relevance on campus. Um, I don't actually have a whole lot of time to do teaching. And we have three research librarians who do instruction. Um, and otherwise, I'm a one a person um, operation as far as technical services go. Um, so I, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't be putting my hand up really, really quickly to do a lot more instruction, but I would certainly um, take on uh, classes like maybe one a class like this again in the future and more advising if I was working with um, if some of the instruction librarians were working with our collections more or digital collections more um, and wanted and wanted to um, kind of understand more about the back end of things which actually already does happen they often come with to me with questions they have about you know, subject headings and descriptions and things like that, so. Thanks. Um, any fun su surprises or could you talk about your favorite yearbook image? Hmm. Oh boy. Um, let me think about that for a moment. Um, Fun surprises. Uh, it, I, I think one of the fun things I found, um, which didn't relate so much to their descriptions or the their projects, but was having discussion with them about um, metadata and controlled vocabularies and some of the questions that they had for example, we looked at um, an example of dogs versus canines, and they, they just had good questions. Well, why wouldn't we use both terms? And um, so, you know, we talked about that. I, I, like I said earlier, I was really excited when they started to identify metadata in the world around them. And the one student who talked about the commercial being a form of metadata and being a sort of persuasive form of, um, of metadata. So I think that engaging with them, because I don't do a lot of student um, classroom work, I, I do more reference work, but not student classroom work, engaging with them as a group was, was kind of a novelty for me. Um, yeah. Hey. Uh do you use Omeka for your library projects, or was that platform selected only for the class? Yeah, we do. We just started um, digitizing. Have we have our digital collections online now? And yes, we are using Omeka. Um, but at the time that we did the course, um, Omeka was selected by Professor Bond, um, and so Patty and I were learning it for the first time. Now, um, we're, I, I'm uh, in charge of our digital collections, and I've um, come to understand the CMS a lot more. Um, and I think it, it works for us. Um, it works for us really well. Thank you. Um, can you talk about uh, usage stats for the materials? Did it reach the alumni? Uh, okay, that's a great question. Um, 
the final projects uh, they were they are they are still available publicly online but um, the result wasn't something we um, we pushed past the project. So meaning um, we didn't, we had communications come and um, when the students uh, did presentations about their projects. And I think after seeing the results, we, we didn't feel that they were necessarily strong enough to, um, to really showcase publicly. So we didn't, we didn't um, advertise the final projects. Um, although, like I said, they are available publicly through um, Dr. Bond's website. So anybody can see them, but College Communications didn't, didn't promote them. And I should say that was a learning curve for me. I, um, I hadn't worked with students before in, uh, in this capacity. And I had hoped, I had this vision that we would get um, this, this final project that would eventually even become archival in, in the sense of that we could use them as, as our digital collections, part of our digital collections. And I think um, I learned that this was more of a learning opportunity for them. And it may have archival value to us, but not so much. Um, to showcase the college archives um, or to um, to reach out to alumni, um, at least not through the students' projects, because that's more of a learning opportunity for them. Thank you. Uh, which of the readings were most effective with your students? Were there some that were more impactful than others? I'll show you the readings. Um, Actually, they seem to grasp. Um, they seem to grasp the notion or the concept of metadata pretty quickly. I would say these two readings were really helpful. Um, they were the, the um, Steve Miller, Stephen Miller reading in particular is one of my favorites for an introduction to metadata for digital collections um, because it is very accessible. Um, and then the second one, the, the hider, I just had them look particularly at controlled vocabularies in that um, chapter um, and metadata quality. Uh, so I would recommend these two. We looked at some articles as well, but they, they just got a little bit too complex. And we wanted, since this was um, a general studies course, we really wanted to make it very introductory and very accessible. How many students were in this course and how many students were in each small group? Yeah, um, so there were 16 students enrolled in this class and for our campus that's actually um, that's above average. So we aim at class sizes around 13 um, but sometimes we get more students. So we had a pretty good um, enrollment and pretty good enrollment numbers and then the teams were divvied up. I believe it was there were five teams. Um, there were either four or five teams. I'm sorry, I can't remember exactly. But there were either four or five teams of, I think there were four teams of four. That sounds right if there were 16 students. So four teams of four, I, I think. Uh, would you recommend that other institutions offer a similar course? I think that, um, yes, firstly, I would say yes, this is valuable. Um, I think that I would, like I said earlier, I would, I would try to give them content to work with if they were building exhibits specifically because exhibits um, really invite more of a narrative, a historical narrative, and Omeka is great for that. Um, but I would give them content that was maybe a little richer for them to have something um, more meaningful to work with. I didn't think the yearbooks, this is my opinion, my colleagues don't necessarily, well, one of my colleagues doesn't necessarily agree, but I didn't feel like, I felt like they really had to struggle to find um, something of, of real interest in the yearbook content. Um, 
so I would I would try and give them content that in some way has it has interests them so that they really they use that interest to propel them to go and build exhibits and to create really relevant metadata really um, consistent and um, valuable metadata I, I didn't feel like their hearts were in the yearbook project and I don't know if it was because it was dictated to them what they would do um, or if the content was just a little weak in what it offered them so I think yes choose your content carefully and um, and have if, if the librarians are going to be involved have lots of um, opportunity for instruction on um, the importance of, of description. Thank you. Uh, have you had any other departments or faculty who've shown interest in incorporating technical instruction in their courses? Uh, for example, the English department? Um, not that I've been made aware of. Uh, we do our humanities uh, research librarian does about 40 instruction sessions a year and a large part of those are with the English department especially the English 105 and certainly you know she's she's showing them you know your typical library instruction databases and um, how to use the the discovery tool and the libguides and that kind of stuff and how to form an effective search. Um, but not so much uh, specific technologies. Um, one thing I will say is that we, and this isn't uncommon, but we have library student assistants and I'm having them work more with me now on um, our digital collections. But not so much in the, I haven't had any further requests by faculty besides Dr. Bond for a future class on digitizing history for technical instruction. Um, I think that's something that we could look at um, doing more if I knew specifically what the faculty were wanting. And as I think about this now, we have a digital pedagogy group on campus so it might be worthwhile to um to check in with them and see see what they're doing um see in fact our library director is on that um committee see what they're doing and see if there's a place to incorporate some um some technologies that we're working with in the library into their classroom so thanks for kind of making me think of that that's a great question uh, on a similar note, uh, someone asked if after teaching this course, there might be an interest in offering workshops to the college as a whole, uh, rather than specifically to a course. So, um, you mean for their, perhaps their personal collections or, I'm curious if that, if the person who asked that question can say a little bit more about what they envision. I'll jump in. That was me who asked the question. This is Amanda. Uh, Sophie, I guess uh, where I was coming from is um, I taught, I helped taught a digital humanities course. And one thing we found is that that was a skill set that was, uh, well, for better words, kind of lacking with the students. And that was one thing that we discussed, maybe offering a workshop to the university as a whole. So I was just curious, uh, since you're a smaller institution, if that is something that you have thought about too. Yeah, you know, um, last year at the end of the semester, the digital pedagogy group hosted, um, they hosted a workshop in the library and uh, different faculty and librarians and librarians are faculty in our campus. Um, we, we each presented technologies that we've used in our classes throughout the year. Um, so that was an opportunity where the librarians and my colleagues, I'll give you uh, an example aside from the digitization project. A couple of my colleagues taught um, a research strategies course and used some different uh, poster 
software, poster uh, creation software. So they presented that at the digital um, pedagogy workshop. And this was specifically for faculty. So it gave faculty an opportunity to jump to the different faculty at the workshop and talk to them about the different technologies they've used. So we talked about um, Omeka and we talked about, um, you know, the Google sites and things like that that we used for our course. And I know one professor uses, he loves, he's a big WordPress advocate, so he was there just um, showcasing WordPress and somebody else who uses wikis and so on. So in that way, we have um, demonstrated, uh, and I think we could probably do more of that. So thanks for the suggestion. Another question came through. Uh, do you have any suggestions for an in-class activity related to digital humanities that students could complete in less than 30 minutes? Hmm. I wish I had Patty here because she, she teaches all, all the time and has all sorts of ideas about interactive activities. Um, hmm. Let me think. Um, well, one thing she did uh, in this class that I talked about a little, a little bit, but I didn't show you um, all the images that she used. Um, whether this is specifically what you're talking about in, as far as digital humanities go, I'm not sure, but she had images up um, she presented the students with images and those images were of things that we we just don't normally see in our culture um, interesting pieces of fruit um, interesting tools and then she wanted to get students trying to figure out how they would find out what this is and um, she didn't use Google Images to upload the images, which I, I think I would have done um, so that I could teach them how, how Google Images can work a little bit um, for them. Rather, she used more language-based approaches. How would we describe this piece of, do we even know if this is a piece of fruit? Like, what do we do with this thing that we don't know? And, but I think what was effective about that was that it was very much an, an engaged, class. Um, so I would suggest something like that if you're looking at um, visual objects. I also really liked what she did with the, the audio because with the audio she got them thinking about, um, and I have a music background, so this is something that interests me, but how we interpret text, um, how we interpolate meaning onto text, um, and then create, you know, an aboutness. What is this about? Um, and so I think what I liked about her approach was she just got them thinking about things by interacting with them with images, with audio, and just engaging in discussion. Very interesting. Uh, one more question. Um, what were the challenges that the students faced when using the tools to create metadata? You know, um, the students didn't actually, despite being, um, despite, you know, we had the content standards guidelines page and on that page we gave them um, I created a help page with two big pictures of Patty and me our phone numbers our contact information and for the most part we did not get a lot of questions about the metadata aspect we had some technical troubleshooting to deal with in Omeka um, but mo for the most part, the students did not ask questions about metadata. And the, um, 
the results were were a little bit disappointing and, and with the metadata that they created i was hoping for better from them um, especially given that we had provided such clear guidelines at least i thought it was clear um, and we got no feedback in the course evaluations about metadata either um, they they really didn't they didn't seem to um, they didn't seem to really beyond the class kind of engage much further or ask a lot of more questions about it or dig deeper or and um, I would say most students struggled with that so in future I I would want to think up some some more strategies maybe checking I think we did check their projects on the way and we gave them feedback before the projects were final submissions were um, were provided so it, it's a bit of a puzzle but they just didn't seem to make a lot of investment in metadata and maybe it's just not that interesting to them you know it's interesting to me because this is what I do for a living but maybe to, to some of them this level of detail is just not it's just not that interesting I'm not sure thank you and I it's just a clarifying question. Uh, did you teach in every class or just a few of them? Yeah, just three classes. We were given three classes. Um, one of them was went to digital literacy. And then uh, the next one Patty taught was just um, an overview of um, metadata elements. And then the class I taught, taught was specifically on metadata and controlled vocabularies conceptually and um, with examples and we that's when we started to dig into the thesaurus and um, you know expectations for the projects thank you um, and was this class set up in a lab setting uh, to get hands-on experience Yes, it was. We had the computer lab in the library, which is where we do most of our instruction sessions. And there are computers in um, that lab. Thank you. I'm um, not seeing too many more questions here. Uh, let's see here. Um, well, thank you. It looks like we've answered all the questions. Um, if you have additional ones, feel free to send them on and we'll pass them along to the presenter. That was very helpful. Um, and that is the end of our presentations for this conference. Um, we will be wrapping up in just a bit uh, with Amanda and then we'll move on to our business meeting.